Cool. Uh, please welcome Jacob from Motion Maps. Thanks, Jason, for uh, having me. Um, how would you gamify Wikipedia? I'm excited today to show you my company, Motion Maths, answer to that question. It's a new game called Questimate. Is there a kid in the audience that wants to come up and play Questimate with me today? Anybody? Yeah? Great, come on up. Come on up. Hi, what's your name? Benjamin? They call me Benny. Benny, you got it. So S Questimate is full of diverse, now we're gonna need a chair for you, why don't you sit here so you can play. Uh, full of diverse estimation quests. And today, we're gonna start with the animals quest. Questimate is the first game where players make their own questions. So I'm gonna say, how many mice would be as long as a goat? Now I have to answer first. You get a little more time to start thinking about that question. How many mice would be as long as a goat? I'm gonna say maybe 15. And now it's your turn. You're just going to slide that to put in your answer. Whoa. <laughs> what do you think? How many, how many mice would be as long as a goat? Hundred fifty? Okay, great. And now we find out the answer. I said fifteen, you said a lot more. Let's find out. Only eight. So we're both pretty off. Right? Now, if we want to know really, we can go, yeah, click that button, really. And we can get the equation. Let's find out. So the average adult white footed mouse is three point nine four inches long. A goat is two point six feet long. Here's the math. We can switch the units if we want. Or if we want to know more about goats, we can click, you can touch that button, the goat button, and we get to the source of the information. So this game is a vehicle for curiosity and exploration. And now you get to make the next question. Estimation is very hard to teach on the chalkboard. But as many teachers will verify, it's one of the most important math skills. Uh, estimations everywhere and uh, developing mathematical intuition about the world is something that, that we want to accomplish in this game. All right, how many grasshoppers would be as long as a rabbit? Your turn. Something else we found in testing or just actually in, in our previous games, is that these devices can sometimes splinter family time. Um, this is a game that adults and kids can play together. Younger children, older, older kids can play together because no one's really memorized these answers. We're all estimating, trying to figure out. 35, okay. I'm gonna say 10. Uh, Ten. Ah! Got that one. <laughs> and now we'll play a very different kind of estimation. This one's visual estimation. How tall is a giraffe compared to a zebra? And this is pure visual estimation here. So I'm going to pinch these until they look about right. Maybe like that, that's my estimate. And now you get a chance. The game goes through four different types of estimation, numerical, pure visual, comparison. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, let's find out. Whoa! All right, we both got points on that one. You got in the target. Nice work. I got a treasure. Do you want to pick my treasure? So different power-ups. And um, first of all, let's give a round of applause to Benny. Thanks for playing. We can play more later. Thank you, Benny. Thanks for playing. You have an iPad? Maybe? Yeah. Here, you have some credits now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. So we are launching this game uh, with estimation quests about animals, about history, when do things occur on the timeline, developing a historical intuition for when events have occurred, speed, which is really challenging, how fast uh, different vehicles take. Um, and it's really, we see as the beginning, we're excited to get feedback from our audience on uh, what other content, our own content, and that from expert partners we can put into the game uh, to make exploration and estimation fun and social. Um, so thanks very much for uh, having me here. What we've learned from this process of making the game is that uh, if you give kids choices, if you empower them, they'll actually create very difficult challenges for themselves. Um, they, they maybe initially start with some of the easier questions. They want that challenge. They really delight in it. And what we are really looking for is feedback on our launch of this product. We're launching it July 10th for the iPad. Uh, if you email me, jacob at motionmathgames.com, I'd love to send you an early promo code and get your feedback on Questimate. Thanks. So Mitch, I know you're an angel investor in this one, so I'll, um, I'll have you give us your feedback on why you invested in a minute, but judges, what did you think? I love the idea. Um, one question. If this can be applicable to children who are pretty young, would, does it have an option where it reads the questions to you? Uh, we don't have that yet. Uh, it, we don't have that yet, and actually that is a kind of a requirement for the game. We really see it as nine and up. How old are you, Benny? Seven. Seven. Okay, so very precocious to be playing this game. Um, uh, you really do have to be a fluent reader, but I think that's a great later uh, uh, feature to add. <laughs> More feedback? Questions? I guess a question is, um, you know, in the kids' market, I think one of the biggest challenges for non-school distributed products is distribution, mm -hmm. especially if you're on iPad. Just, you know, how do you, because there's, like, not really a kids' category. There's games and there's books. And right. so, like, how do you plan on marketing the product and building awareness for it? Yeah, great, great question. Thank you, Eileen. Um, they actually are going to have a kids' category soon. They announced that just at WWDC, which I think is good to differentiate between mm -hmm. kids and education. Um, and actually, we have a suite of five games already in the market. 25% of our sales are already uh, to teachers. So there is that growing um, school um, uh, market for iPad products. Uh, we, uh, a lot of PR has been very helpful for our distribution. And with this game in particular, you know, it's an ongoing development process of really bringing people into a dialogue about how they want the product to evolve. So we're excited to, to have that as a new kind of marketing channel. You started off by, by using the term you know, Wikipedia or gamifying Wikipedia, and I was yeah. very confused by that because this is you know more about math challenges, mm -hmm. and you know an estimation is a very important thing. So the positioning of your product, I think, is is really important, mm -hmm. and then also just uh, to iterate the the crowdedness of kind of you know just a lot of games yeah. on the iPad and finding this type of stuff. So you know, trying to position your product as, you know, working on the really tough things, like if estimation is a really bottleneck concept, like I know fractions is as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you're kind of working on the toughest, most, most gritty kind of math problems that everyone needs to know that are the foundations for the rest of math. Um, because I think that, that type of positioning is going to be very helpful uh, to distinguish yourself. And then just, you know, math in particular, you know, it's such a broad range, like you want to have adults play as well as kids, but what is the right 
uh, child target because if you're going for too narrow of space, you know, it's kind of like how big of a company can you be? And so how are you going to go all the way down to a three-year-old and have audio readback and also serve, you know, all the way up through high school or whatever, you know, adults or whatever? It seems like a pretty broad, and can you do that, and is it a credible uh, story? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Great question. I'd love to talk to you more about how, how we position the product because we haven't launched it yet. Um, you know, I think it's easier on the product side, actually, to develop for larger ages than it is uh, distribution-wise. I think that's where the challenge is, you know, who are your partners. But in terms of the math content, our first game was a fractions game for precisely that reason you said. It's one of the biggest stumbling blocks. And it's a fourth grade standard, but man, there are a lot of eighth grade teachers that tell, tell us, you know, my students really have benefited from this game because they never really mastered it. Um, and some even community colleges have told us that. And estimation is that same kind of topic that um, I don't know how many grasshoppers are as tall as a giraffe. Um, I never learned that in school. So You made it clear, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Zing. Um, Great. So, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. So first I was going to say uh, hats off to you for not only doing a live demo, but then bringing someone from the audience up to do it and it went actually fairly smoothly and I've been to many hundreds of events like this and I've never seen it work before. <laughs> so this really, that is number, this is the first time and with no offense Ben, a, a younger individual uh, as well. So yeah. it's like double hats off. Congratulations yes. to you Thank on you. that. Um, what I would say is that uh, I was, and I was pretty impressed by it, but you know, I have a child in the target age range, mm -hmm. a, a little bit older than Ben and a little bit under your target age, but in the strike zone, so to speak, which would get me a gold chest. Um, my, my, a couple, couple points. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, the revenue model for me was, I find myself going in and buying uh, my daughter a bunch of games in the games that I've already bought her, which is a little annoying, but I do it. So I, I think there's a revenue model there where if they fall in love with the game, you can do in-game sales to unlock, and you didn't really talk about that, and I think that's yeah. an important one. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, just a small point, and then a, a third unrelated, is that you know maybe some of the U, UI polish was very, very, very good, but I found that the games that my daughter engages in more had a lot more depth of... Uh, design, for example, backgrounds are designed and everything's moving. It makes me seasick when I look at them, but uh, yeah. she, she loves them. Uh, and in fact, I can tell a game she'll love right away by how seasick it will make me. Um, and then my, my final point was, you know, probably at least from my perspective, one of the most seminal things was that you have five other games in the App Store and you didn't even bring that up. And I, I thought like, hey, this is our sixth title. The first five titles have done A, B, and C. Then you would have come up with so much more credibility to mm. find that out after the fact. You know, I just w wish a as a judge I had known that earlier and you'd thrown some metrics okay. out. But o overall, very awesome. Sam, what do you think? Um, I love it and I think my daughter would love the game too. But um, m many of my points are the same as his. You know, I would think of investing in your company as investing in a gaming studio. And when I saw the app by itself, you know, pre-launch, um, I don't think it was that exciting as a standalone product. But if you're looking at a company that has several other games and you can do, you know, in-app referrals, then that's much more exciting. I'd love to know a bit about your other apps and how well they're doing. Like, what are the daily active users and how well you've done in that space? Yeah, thank you very much. Great question. Um, we, um, we have five apps. We have um, 80,000 uh, um, daily active users, 800,000 monthly active users for our total suite, 2.7 million total downloads. Um, some of that uh, we've uh, experimented with pay to download and also free with in-app purchase, unlocking more. This is actually a, even a, a different revenue model. As Adeo said, it's going to be ongoing new content. So it, it has a, an ongoing content, uh, on, ongoing revenue model. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we're excited to, to cross promote from all those obviously into the new product. Thank you. Okay, Mitch, why did you invest? So we um, met Jacob, I think, before the first title actually came out. So at the beginning, iPad was pretty new and just saw that you could use the medium of the iPad and the gestures and the, the pinching and the more kinetic, one of the earlier games involved tilting and uh, tilting the iPad using the accelerometer to make more impactful learning 
and plus we thought that it was a good balanced team between the tech side and the education side and we were placing a bet that they would be resourceful and persistent which indeed they, they, they've been. I think there's a bit of tension between the ground rules I heard you announce which says yeah. just do a product demo yeah. and the investors who are saying tell me your company story and yeah, so on. Yeah just for so the ground rules they want to sort there's that out, only so. six minutes so to go through into too much background we, we try to just keep them in the product but yeah. um, for the, so we expect that that comes out in the Q&A a little bit. So um, great. Uh, let's hear it for Jacob. Great. Thank you very much. And, uh,